Welcome back to another episode of Delusions of Automotive Grandeur. On today's episode, the gang is finally back together. Steven talks about Lordstown Motors, and Brent talks about the cars seen at the gas station in Los Angeles. Strap in. It's time for Dag Show. This looks darker than it actually is. No, that checks out. That checks out from, from what, what I, I need. That's what I need is more hair on my chest. Yeah, this is the uh, official beer of Fiesta ST owners. Oh, Perfectly crap. lines with our confident sense of masculinity. This is some good bloopers right here. <laughs> Can, uh, you myself Wait a minute. He's been recording. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to the show. Um, I am not one eighth intoxicated. Oh, um, it's delusions of automotive grandeur. And oh God, yeah, I really, really think I'm drunk, but really I'm just trying to figure out what to say. But welcome to the show. We're back. It's a triumvirate. Um, uh, we've After decided to all embrace your presence. Look at Charlie. He's beaming. He's beaming. That's um. But uh, yeah, welcome to the show. We, we're very organized for the show. We have an exact regimented thing we're going to talk about every 2.4 minutes. Or actually, we, I don't, other than that one thing I just told you all before we started, I'm, I'm, you know, just hanging out, man. Just hanging out. Charlie muted himself. Oh, no, I, he, I he, he came y'all. back. Yeah, hey, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry, I had to, some yard work being done, and it's all gone now, so... I say let it roll. Yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't want to have your your wonderful intro <laughs> just rolled over by the the blower sounds. Worked hard on that intro. I know. You killed it. Scripted. You nailed it Very scripted. One take. Great job. They call me one take, Dill. <laughs> you don't want it's that good or bad thing. I don't know. Anyway, so car stuff. Yeah. You were telling us about. I was these electric uh wheels please go on tell us some more about this um that yeah there's a you know it's been you know a fairly political hot potato thing going on about good god my cat's going crazy in the background um it's a very professional show i'm um, in lordstown ohio it's been sort of a political hot potato being passed around you know like one minute you know the factory is going to be a gm haven of electric cars the next minute gm's selling it um, some privateer company gets it, they sell it, they fall apart. You know, there's like phantom wear. Will the car ever even be seen by anyone? And one of these is a, um, a truck called like, I think it's called Lordstown. I'm going to get this right. So we can be highly professional. Yes. It's Lordstown motors. And, uh, this model I believe is called the endurance unless I'm imagining that. And the interesting thing about it is it's got, um, uh, it's got electric, uh, it's an electric truck. And the electric motors are actually built into the wheels. So in essence, you literally, there are no drive shafts. There's no parasitic loss anywhere in a drivetrain. It's just literally the motor is in the wheel. Um, and I just wanted to get y'all's thought about that. Thoughts about that. Do you, can you think of any sort of, uh, you know, engineering that's may not be, you know, what are your thoughts on that from an engineering point of view? I don't know. Brent, do you want to go first? I'm assuming there's no brakes. And it's just engine braking. I mean, because you could run an energy back into the, I mean, yes, there's, you know, like recharging type braking, but you could actually actively put energy into those motors too and use them as brakes, you know, no friction surfaces, which would be kind of interesting too. Um, Uh, Yeah. I mean, it's very interesting. That's, that's, that's for sure. I don't, I don't know if, um, I would need to know like more detail on what it kind of costs to um, replace a motor. Brash. I mean, that's a lot, especially if somebody say ran over a curb and took off their wheel. That's their motor. So I, yeah, you know what? Yeah. What are we? Uh, looking at for cost wise is that going to brush out starts the, a brush fire <laughs> you, well yeah is, say, is that going to total out the car just because you, you know you lost the wheel the 
I don't know. Is Let me it see part of the wheel back. itself? If if it is what I have seen on other stuff, it is not so much part of the wheel as it is part of the axle. Like, like on the that's, what I, that's what I've seen other, not this one specifically, um, but it's like almost in between where like I think your standard like axle hub would be and it's connected to the wheel that way. Um, but I don't know. It's interesting. Um, I know there's a few. There was a, an aftermarket company that was pursuing this in the with the uh, at SEMA 19, where they were like, I think they showed like a, I want to say it was a Honda Civic Type R with uh, these mounted not on the front but on the rear, in essence making the CTR a all-wheel drive vehicle, um, which that's an interesting idea um, for especially like. In turn, like, not saying people have hit the limits on CTRs because I know they're still getting faster um, every, you know, week. I'm sure, um, you know, just like every other hot hatch, there's always somebody putting a bigger turbo on it, adding more fuel yeah. to it. But it is interesting to think of these wheel mount power-driven sources as alternatives for. The not so distant future i guess um, i know there's also been a few options for like um what was it like a uh, hybrid flywheel situation where like they basically oh, mount yeah. between the engine and the gearbox and it basically it's a power adder without having to you know it could get you off the line or something you know like the first five miles an hour leaving a light if it spools up while you're doing 80 before or something or while you're braking what uh the specific one i'm thinking of it was for old uh, air-cooled porsches uh, which are notorious for being very expensive per horsepower added um, to that motor um, so you could literally buy an old air-cooled and you can double its you know add another 80 horsepower for a very expensive number um it's you don't want to ask about that how expensive that is but also it's still cheaper than adding more horsepower to air cool um the um but it's all in chart yeah charlie in this uh, in the in the article um that i was reading about it they mentioned a couple other sort of engineering uh happy things Mm -hmm. uh, is what the engineers would call it. Um, that the um, you know having the the electric motors even in a Tesla they're fairly compact obviously, but mm -hmm. it frees up more um, space for batteries or internal storage in the car because you have less stuff. It's also a lower center of gravity to talk about. Although of course we talked about the unsprung weight thing, but yeah. um, something occurred to me though when I was when I was sort of like waiting to to relate those things is that you know like you know, they're probably hub mounted. They're probably not really wheel mounted Not the wheel itself necessarily but maybe yeah. maybe they are because it would be less moving no, looking at know. the pictures it's not wheels are mounted to it like okay. a standard six lug pattern well, overall that's that's what i was thinking is you know like hmm they better have like good lug nuts because people are going to be stealing the motors <laughs> the well, yeah i was going to say also just well think of also of the amount of torque you have on hand with those electric motors if it's even a good motor it's going like you're going to want six big lug mounts to your your wheels so you don't shear through everything yeah but, yep. i don't know it's it's definitely an interesting idea electric in general i think is absolutely fascinating i don't know that it's you know the right fit for everybody no matter what elon and others say i think there is you know, I'm, I'm definitely in the, like, diversify. Like, all, a lot of power sources are good power sources. And That's um, James May's approach. He is sort of one of everything. He's got, like, that Hyundai uh, crap, the hydrogen one, and um, a variety of things. What happens if you drive through, like, you're wading through water with your electric motors built into your wheels? That is a question that I don't have the answer for you. Be a lot of frogs being electrocuted and shot out of the water all around you. Uh, probably, probably not. I would assume most. It's you would have to hope that uh, if the engineers are worth their weight, they've 
potted all their motors and like in a an epoxy resin or something to keep them from shorting out yeah especially for them being that low too yeah 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 exactly like i'm sure there's somebody out there getting paid lots of money to solve that problem just in case but yeah it would be that would be a uh pretty comical whoops um i don't know sorry charlie i thought you had a little bit of uh, clown makeup on your cheek okay no sorry that was that's a joke for Brent. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, so uh, starting, I think, um, is it tomorrow? I'm pretty sure it's not next week. I'm pretty sure it's tomorrow. Uh, Formula One starts to start kicking up again. They're um, going to Austria for a couple of weeks. Cool. In their uh, biological bubble or whatever they're calling it um, to try to get some motor racing going. So I think that would be probably the first like proper World World Series level racing to get back going it's going to be empty stands yeah that's all right that's that's fine, I, mean, I mean it's not like you really saw anybody in the stands anyways <laughs> I was thinking this, yeah it's the same thing i was like yep not yeah, really like twelve hundred dollar tickets but, i mean people go but it's you know when you're watching on tv it's 190 mile an hour cars going by and you're not really caring about the people in the background so actually that wasn't an accurate when i sort of pretended to watch a car go by it wasn't an accurate hybrid era car noise it would be like <sighs> charlie what would a v10 formula one car going by sound like um angry just sounds angry <laughs> Anyway, craziest sound I ever heard was uh, at a race was uh, it wasn't Martinsville. By the way, I went to um, fun fact. I went to the last carbureted, uh, and I believe Martinsville is the oldest functioning NASCAR race at the moment. Um, okay. I went to the last carbureted race and the first fuel injected race, and in the stands, I could smell less unburnt gas. I kid you not. Like it was amazing. Like, um, uh, I think I forgot my actual point. I did. You, you've been you've you've uh, been witness to the the death of the carburetor and the birth of fuel injection. Yes. Hating yourself at NASCAR's oldest track. It was great, I and mean, there's totally a point to that story. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'll just tell the audience that I have not had an alcoholic beverage, and I just slur the word alcoholic. I have not had an alcohol alcoholic, alcoholic. beverage in. five months and even then i was a late lightweight charlie so i can't i can't speak you went you went the other way with quarantine went the other <laughs> way everyone else i knew like started drinking heavy really? like that. like it was a there was definitely the fir- was it the first week it was uh two two beers two beers cool 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 i uh let's just say um i got off the wagon when it comes to uh totino's pizza rolls um, but <laughs> yes, I timed it just right. Um, you know, I, graphically, I could stand up and show y'all the belly, but I won't. But it's, um, let's just say that, you know, I have to relate this to cars somehow. It's a little harder to get the lap belt in my Mustang on anymore. Mm. I am off the wagon when it comes to pizza rolls, but not alcohol. I was say, before quarantine, you were like a, a Gen 1 Ford Taurus, and then... After quarantine, you were like the 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 kind of like rounder four no, tours. I I actually completely jumped the shark and I went to H two Hummer. Ooh. From Taurus. Ooh. I crossed the streams, man. It was bad. It was bad. So you went from H three Hummer down to H one Hummer. No H two H two. See, I find the H two to be here's the okay. Let's have a topic. What do you find to be more bloated? <laughs> The H2 Homer or the H1? Now, the H1 had a purpose. Well, the, the H2 well, yeah. was like, let's take a Suburban and reskin it and make it this blah thing. Well, hold on. Wasn't the, so the H1 was built off the actual mm-hmm. Humvee yep. platform, but it was yep. like, they actually added like seat belts and the appropriate legal requirements to make it drivable stateside, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it was still dog shit slow. Yes. And, and stupid had- wide. Stupid wide, 
and stupid big and stupid big cool okay glad we're on that page so the h2 was the one that was on the suburban platform correct well i mean suburban platform is just a frame but right yeah it's bottom but around. essentially but I, it was just it, to me it just looked like some sort of bloated cartoon michael bay version of an h1 like yeah. somebody so, you know people bought them it's better than no, the it's, a suburb, it's a suburban version yeah, it's gonna say it's a suburban Humvee. What do you want? It makes <laughs> perfect sense. It's still better H than the H three and the what was it the uh, the H three truck? Was it? Well, I liked the H three truck, but whatever. I'm crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, H because when you introduce the truck bed, Charlie, it's back to having a purpose again. Yeah, a little baby purpose, but a purpose. No, it never had a purpose because it was always going to be just a mall crawler. Just like every little like, I feel like the gladiator falls into that as well. It's like it's a great idea, but it's going to end up being a mall crawler. Sorry, Charlie. None of the uh, whatever the generation of current people is called knows what a mall is. You may have to translate. It's like Zoom Amazon, but a store. Zoom yeah, the Zoomers have to know that. Uh, that a mall is somewhere one used to be able to autocross. Wow. Did you see what I did there, Brent? Wait. I did that with my beer. It made him okay, freeze. There, for we, there we are. <laughs> I was going to say, like, what, what happened? <laughs> break it. Uh, maybe he just, like, froze in place. And then <laughs> I was, <laughs> it's bad. I looked at my, I looked at my connection and I was suddenly like, oh, like, did my connection drop? And I was just about to be real sad. I've, I've come to a conclusion about um, Greek yogurt. You know, it's like a, it's like a, a step up from, there's a, there's a, there's, there's a, we're getting there. Um, you know, like there's regular yogurt. And then there's Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt is pinky out yogurt. What? It's fancy yogurt. It's like regular yogurt wasn't good enough. Let's go Greek with it. And then regular yogurt is kind of trash compared to Greek yogurt though. Actually, I got to tell you, I kind of fell for Greek too. The texture is better. Always. Always. Oh, man. Come out with all the hot takes. So is it true that they made a... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Brent. Oh, you're in. So, Charlie, is it true that they made a... You know, like the 2009 era on Jetta sports wagon, but with a GTI powertrain? Did they ever make a 2009 Jetta sport wagon, but with the GTI? And not necessarily that, that year, but just that design language. Uh, so, the Jetta sport wagon 2009 was a one year model shape oh. design um so the 2009 was actually the last of the mark 5 uh uh front ends and headlights and everything um and then in 2010 the sport wagon went to the um more up to date the less chrome the mark 6 less chrome yeah but like the um okay well i guess i didn't know that but like i thought it was like you know the sort of unibody structure the six-year life of that general look of that car mm -hmm. like i think i was talking to gti ben kenobi and he mentioned that there may have been like a gli variant or something at some point so they all had the 2.0 engine if i remember correct um, and i could certainly be wrong about this you could get the sport wagon with the 2.0 turbo but it was detuned and okay. small turbo um, similar to what they already do for, or currently do for the more modern platform as well, where it's a 2.0, yes, it's a 2.0 turbo, same block as a GTI, but it's the um, itty bitty, you know, turbo you can like basically hold like that. Um, a little cute baby turbo. Yeah, a little baby turbo. I mean, like the GTI turbo is only, if this is the golf turbo, it's the GTI turbo is only that. Um, so, and the Golf R1 is the same size, and you know they just do a little porting and making it the impeller a little bigger. I mean, like, is that like the the turbos? Is that their own opinion of how 
Or is that like, do I have other people? Sorry, I was trying to make a, a lewd joke about overestimating one's turbo size. Um, another thing that the uh, viewers may not actually know is that, um, Charlie, what does GTI stand for again? Get that intercooler. Get that intercooler. That's right. Brent agrees. I mean, it's hot out. I have one. <laughs> Heat soaked as hell. You're going to want that intercooler. Got to get that intercooler. Got to get that intercooler. Brent, what cars have you seen at your gas station lately? <laughs> there was a Lamborghini Huracan this morning. Nice. Most of us see that at gas stations. That's not very exceptional, Brent. What else you got? I feel like, Brent, we just need Let's a wet see. camp that is always on. Yes. Well, let me see what's there right now. It's it's yes, that'll be great. It's like the eleven foot bridge, Charlie. You know, yeah, the guy oh, always yeah. had the webcam on it. Yeah. You know, so uh I have seen that bridge in Durham um because it is not far from uh Helen's work down there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nothing good. Nothing, Nothing good. good. Oh, bum. Nope. Just a gold minivan. I was, That's about I was it. Maybe Elon would be out there with the cyber truck. <laughs> no, um, the cyber truck's down at the Peterson right now. So oh, is that what they're driving it? Yep. So it's around oh, the gold cool. leaf minivan. Um, let's see. Last week there was um, Lamborghini uh, Aventador SVJ 488 As Special. Um, you wouldn't know there's a pandemic going on. Just all these, you have you have essentially what's better than a cars and coffee in Charlottesville, like in six months, and it's just across the street at a gas station. Pretty much. I mean, the the times that I see like the like the Ferraris and the Lamborghinis, they're all driving together. They're all going on a cruise or whatever. So. Um, I know the other day there was probably about 30 motorcycles out there. Mm. Um, for, I don't understand why they all show up at that gas station because it's like 80 cents overpriced compared to the rest of the city. Does it have yeah. a lot of room maybe for... You got the Shepherd Ferry in the background. Yeah. It makes for good Insta photos, man. I just, I love... Well, you can, see, when you're down there though, like you can't get a mm. good picture unless you go into the parking lot next to the gas station mm. in which that's a pay only parking lot so it's not anything really to do with that they're just a bunch of them are getting gas at the time so it's like i don't i don't know i you can go two blocks down the road basically and get gas for you know 80 cents cheaper or whatever so i, I just love the gas. fact that you have this like gaggle which i think is a technical term of aventadors and ferraris and things and they're in la and they're going for a drive together, right? Pack of supercars is called a gaggle. That is the a it's a gaggle, or, or it's a murder of crows. But um, and you know, yeah, we've got for the ravens next, like, here. What do you say? We've got ravens here. The proper and the heart, or the raven cried evermore. Yes. Wow, we went literature. I, anyway, beer. Um, so like these people are in these fancy cars. They're obviously going to go for, they're like, let's hang out together, guys. We're in LA. So like 45 minutes, they're going to be bumper to bumper on like, on the interstate. And then they're going to get to the curvy roads, you know, like, right are they now. really, are, I mean, can you imagine being in like a Honda Civic and be like, really guys, you know, like you're in an Aventador doing one, you know? I mean, right now, I, I'm, at least they're in an Aventador. I mean, yeah. good point. Very good point. <sighs> I, you know the, the well i sent you guys the picture the other day when i was coming back from a grocery store where you know i i believe they were probably getting food or whatnot whatnot but there was the event door and then behind it was the gt3 rs I'm like man you know thinking about it for one event door you could actually get two gt3 rs's they'd have the same number of cylinders right but how many Camrys could you buy? <laughs> I, would have, I would rather have the GT3 RS compared I mean, to the Aventador, truthfully. I don't like Lamborghinis. I, Lamborghinis to me, um, I've said this to y'all before, like, you know, I, I'm not into modern Lamborghinis. You know, it's like, give me, give me Mira or give me Yugo. You know, like, I, I just, like... It's 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 as if since 1980, 1974 or whatever when the Countach came out that they have not tried a different design language. We've talked about this before. Like the Mira had 
straight lines, yes, but it had some grace to it. It was like, there was an element of it, instead of just being like an in-your-face 80s white suit, the collar up in a pink shirt, straight up greased hair on some dude, flashy, look at me, it's Miami Vice or something, even though they used Ferraris. Um, that was a great metaphor. Um, you know, what happened to Lamborghini's ability to design a beautiful car? They've not even tried. Well, yeah, so, but at least they have a design element. Yeah, yeah but I was going to say, so... Boring. Well, think it, about... It, okay, so it, it's boring, but think about the 911. Yeah. And that silhouette uh, that's been the exact yeah. same since the 60s. So, you yeah, mean the so, 997, the 996, the 991, or the 943, 2742? Uh, 993. Don't, don't mess that up. 867, uh, 539. Um, yeah, <laughs> you got her number. Um, but yeah, uh, I'd say, if anything, I think Lamborghini has... I can hear both sides here. You know, I think what Stephen you are referring to is like the old Bertone, smoother, like the you know thinking of like you know you specifically called out the uh, the Mira, um, and yes, I would say the the, the Countach has definitely been like their halo of design. And everything since then has kind of tried to emulate that. Um, I think that is probably, you know, I think Brent, you point out correctly that there is something to be said about um, they take the design elements and language that they've built on. And they, I think they have a pretty good understanding of that. Um, I mean, you know, you, when you, maybe not when you hear it, but when you see it on the road, you know it's a Lamborghini. Yeah, they're yeah, especially since they're they're in the we will build V twelves forever, and I mean, and it's, it's the fine. same with the nine eleven where it's always going to be half. I, I would say half the time when you hear it, you're like, oh yeah, that's a nine eleven. Yeah, but when you see it, it's like, yep, yeah, nine eleven. I mean, anyone who doesn't and, know cars is going to be like it's a Porsche. Yeah. And yeah. no matter what, whether it's a nineteen seventies or a twenty twenty you know that's a Porsche exactly. and you know that's yeah. a Lamborghini. Yeah. Whereas I, to me, Ferrari, yes, they're designed from the 458 to the five, uh, 488. You know, that's been pretty similar, but yeah. at the same time, changes to it. Um, I should clarify, like, I'm not saying abandon the design language, guys. I'm saying like, blow everyone's mind and the next time you introduce the the huracan replacement okay try something different <laughs> or did they already replace that sorry i don't really know the models it went, went gallardo then huracan right the huracan now is a dated you know it's what it's a several... dated item yeah, I... and then they've got the huracan yeah. evo now yeah and then the, uh, the urine SUV. is basic the years and that's urine uh-huh um um but I mean, just think, just grab a model, any model, make a new model, make a budget Lamborghini or something, and just say, look, <laughs> we're we're going to try something different. A budget Lamborghini. I'd isn't love to see that one day. Um, okay, I have a recommendation for you guys. It's a budget <laughs> Lamborghini, right? It's, it's a budget Lamborghini. Lamborghini. They're going to call it the, the Steven, because I'm a raging bull. Well, I, th I think um, the budget Lamborghini would be an Audi. Yeah. And then a oh, budget you. Audi would be Audi, a VW. Audi. <laughs> which means you yet, have a lamborghini and a but budget, yet, a budget but yet, volkswagen is a skoda but yeah everything that is owned all together guess what it comes down to vw so yeah exactly at the end of I the actually, day you're driving a vw speaking of volkswagen audi the the big conglomerate um here i was actually i had to i was looking up the huracan just the other day and I noticed it had the, um, what was it, the um, 6.4 liter V12 or whatever. And I was like, wait, 6.4, that sounds awful familiar. Why does that, and I realized like, oh, that's doubling a 3.2 liter V6. Why is that, oh, a 3.2 V6 is what Volkswagen and Audi love to use. Um, it would make sense. But 
it's not the same necessarily like the the uh the v angle is different like uh the vr6 is a narrow angle like 15 degrees whereas a true v is a 60 degree um whoa you used you used engineer language just then i understood that brent didn't yeah uh i never understand that's okay uh but yeah it was it was a funny moment of like wait why is that number significant to me oh Oh, because if you double the cylinder count, it's very, very close. Um, but yeah, uh, I think both Porsche and Lamborghini have a very good understanding of what they critically want to have in their halo vehicles. Um, I dare them to use a curve. I dare them. By the way, I love the Sesto Elemento. That's my favorite Lamborghini probably. Ooh, that was almost more than the Mira. Was that the cover? Uh, the, I think that was a cover car for Horizon at one point. It was a one-off, and they did it. I think they did it like five years ago or something. And it was like everything was carbon. I think it had carbon wheels back before they were affordable. Yeah, and that would, um, that would have been the um, cover car for Horizon, whatever that was, okay. like a couple Four, years ago. Three. Yeah, um, I remember. Yeah. Internet recommendation for the both of you. It's a YouTube channel. It's called Tyrrell's Classic Workshop. And it is a guy in, uh, I guess I can't show it because I'd be against the rules probably, but it's T-Y-R-R-E-L-L for everyone who's listening um, or watching. I guess we're doing watching now. Um, oh God, they can see me. Um, and this show is really great. It's like a super duper, 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 duper. I could say duper for like half an hour high-end mechanic shop in England. And this guy, Tyrrell, I mean, he's his first video, I guess they got big on is he was tuning like all, all, it's either six or 12. I can't remember how many carburetors in a vintage Lamborghini. He's doing it on like a SEMA floor or some car show floor. And that's very, it's an art to tune those things, you know? And the, one of his other videos he has is that he, um, someone in like South Africa or something, I think on a vineyard um, had like an Aston Martin or something and they needed to get the carb carburetors tuned. So this guy's job was to be paid to fly to South Africa to tune a car drive this vintage Aston Martin and then fly home. Yep. Tough job, right? But his actual shop would blow your mind. I mean, he's got, um, he's the guy that if you, someone recently found a yellow Mira that was considered one of the most originals. It was a barn find. They paid like 1.25 million pounds for it. And he's the guy you go to with that. You don't go to cool. someone else. You go to this guy and uh, there you go. There you go. And, um, and they rebuild Lambo engines from scratch. They know them amazingly well. And the cool part is, you see that left video there? The uh, Yarma or whatever? That's a model I didn't even know it existed. It's a two plus two with back seats and everything. It's from the early 70s. There's a lot of really interesting, like, you know, obscure to idiots like me that don't really know the brand that well, um, early Lamborghinis. And um, it was just a really well-produced, there's the uh, Aston Martin video. It's the, on the left of two down from the top. That's the one where he, someone flew him down to, yeah, at Icon at Franken Rucker Rucker. Um, that's, uh, that's that video where he, um, where he was flown to do that. And there's the video where he's tuning the mirror at the bottom. But regardless, this, this channel, at least for the two of you guys, you know, start with that yellow mirror one when you get a chance and just watch it. You'll get hooked. I mean, it's just, this guy's got the good stuff. It's like, um, um, if it's anything, I'm, I for whatever reason, I immediately think of, um, Papadakis, where he's uh he pull he did a like a full engine teardown of like the new Supra when it came out and was like we're gonna we're gonna boost this thing up to a thousand horsepower and turn it into a reliable drift build and like that was in that same line of like super nerdy super technical yeah like he, he went and like had the a new intake manifold three D printed um. And uh, that was fascinating to watch. So I would also um, say go check that out. Yeah, and and definitely when you when you're um, watching this Tiro's Classic Workshop channel, note the shop itself. It's pretty bloody nice, man. The floors are like squeaky clean, and yeah, um, it's it's, like, it's really cool. I definitely um, one of the uh, last thing, and then I'll, I'll shut up about that channel is that. Um, and one of the more recent ones, I think they were taking a V12. Um, I think it was in, it might have been in a Mira. I can't remember, or one of the other sister models. Um, and they were installing it. 
And the crazy, thing, actually, it was definitely not a Murex. It was front engine. Was it front engine? Crap, I don't know. And um, when they were fitting in, they had to have the transmission already attached. And they couldn't take the gear lever off. Somehow, the way Lamborghini designed it, you couldn't take the gear lever off. So imagine the delicate operation of getting a V12 with a transmission. You know, you're on an engine crane trying to get it down in there. And you have that little fragile thing sticking up. And you're like, good God, please don't break this off and have to rebuild the transmission. So keep an eye out for that. Yeah, all I've been watching is the Chicago Auto Pros today. Mm. Um, what do they do? Th well, they are interesting. Um, auto detailing in Chicago area. They've got three detail shops, and they, they're. I would say they aren't to the level of uh, MONYC is, where you know he's so far into detail on each episode, but um, these guys actually have a few, few videos out as far as like getting started with, you know, buffing out a car and stuff on that order, um, coding, stuff on that. And then there was one video um, as far as like starting up a shop itself in which that's kind of what I've been thinking of in the next couple of years is maybe starting up my own shop and transition from working for working for the man and working for myself instead. So, so much for getting you to go in on a lift in my garage. You can have your own lift note. <laughs> I have my own lift, own garage. You're going to start with the shop. lift note though, and then you'll have a <laughs> Own, own shop rules. Yeah. Shop rules. Put all tools away at the end of the day. Yep. God, it's so satisfying to do that. Now that I have a garage, it's crazy. I can't wait and to do that one of these days. Go ahead. And, that, and now you can't yell at anybody else other than yourself for losing something. Oh, and that I is a real problem I have now that I have, a, since having a garage at, at the current spot, it's definitely like, oh man, if I put it in the garage, it's, it's kind of my fault that I didn't put it away. Like, <laughs> um or you lost that 10 mil i have all my 10 mil mills accounted for thank you i'm very actually have them nice and organized and have like at least five 10 mils charlie when we were doing your breaks didn't we have like an 18 and a 20 a millimeter socket but you needed a 19 and we had to go buy like one socket or is that like every project i've ever done i'm just crossing my memories that sounds like the struts on the Volvo, I think. Yeah, there was something like that where you were like, like, great, that's the one size I don't have. Thank you. Yeah, I think it was like a deep well 19 or something like that or something that seemingly was obscure and was one of many flags to um, stop what I was doing and take it to the shop. And um, Fun fact, uh, old Volvos just have big truck springs and you can't use a rental spring compressor to get them down enough. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Is that your GTI that you were compressing springs or was it the Volvo at that time? It was a Volvo. I just remember being terrified. You had to do it twice or something and you were like, the I'm going to die. I'm going to die. The GTI, you can like, apparently you barely need a spring compressor to do the Ooh. shocks on. Okay. Like, they're like, oh yeah, it compresses like maybe like, like an inch or more or so, which mm -hmm. like is grand scheme of thing, nothing. Um, Whereas the the Volvo, like, I probably could have done it if I had two pairs or, a, yeah, two pairs of spring compressors, but it gets really sketchy really quick. Hard Brent, what is the top secret way we're supposed to say this episode's probably long enough? We should probably wrap it up now. Do we have some signal? Oh, is it that? Look what he did with his mouth, Charlie. I have when no Brent idea. Goes, do we? Do we? I, 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 I mean, to me, I don't this. think I don't think there should be any rules as long yeah, as we want. Kind of, I mean, if you want to, if you want to pin it here, like, well, let's pin I would it here. say, no, 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 it's fine. Yeah, let's we pin could, it here. We could do a twenty-four hour challenge, y'all. Um, no. Brent, endurance, endurance vodcasting. I wanted, to, I wanted to say this would be a good point to bring out. You talk about starting up a, uh, starting up a detail shop. Obviously, we all know people who are in that line of work that probably would be 
more than happy to talk about it. Um, yes. May, maybe in a, a not so distant uh, episode, we can we can have someone come in and talk about their experience. Probably and, maybe three episodes, four episodes, we can get them yeah, we'll in. Yeah, we'll figure that out. Um, ask them what their uh, background is and how they started yeah. and so on. So that would be that'd be something really to look forward to, especially for at least local guys in Charlottesville um, yeah. that are looking to get their little baby detailed and whatnot too. So I shouldn't mess with them and bring them the Mustang, the Mustang and say, can you buff and buff this uh, paint out, cut out some of the orange peel? He would not come back me. on the show. So he'll just call me and, and tell, ask what paint stripper to use on your car. I'd yep. be cool with that. All right, let's wrap it up here. Um, yeah, thanks for joining in again. And if you uh, guys liked it, you know, obviously like, subscribe, share it around to your friends and let them know about Stephen being an alcoholic on air and um, Charlie having uh, pest control over at his house. So, you know. That's how that's how we go. So have a good Did one. Did I ever tell you guys about the time I had the Daisy Sandero and I did a J turn and it really impressed this Italian model. If you enjoyed Dag Show, please like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. We are also available on iTunes and Spotify by searching for Delusions of Automotive Grandeur. Thanks again for tuning in, and as always. May the grandeur of your automobiles be delusional? <laughs>